The story begins with two popular kids at school walking in the hallways, while everyone gossips about them as they make a great couple together. These two students, who are already the center of attention in the school, walk past the class corridor, discussing how to amend the school rules and regulations, as well as how to fulfill their promise to the student body. Both of them are executives in the student council, Suzune is the president, while Kazuki is the vice president of the student council. Then we see Usato, an ordinary and forgetful high school student. Usato always hopes in his heart for an extraordinary and fantastical life. Now, it's raining outside after the school has closed. It is expected that every student leaves for their home. He goes to pick up his umbrella and prepares to go home, but he can't find his umbrella right there. This shocks him because he knows someone must have taken it, and that's bad luck for him. He spots an umbrella that does not belong to him, and resists taking it to avoid any form of trouble for himself. He sits down distressfully beside the umbrella, thinking that if only he could use magic. Usato checks the time and wishes to leave for his residence, but he can't due to the heavy rain, so he has no choice but to wait until the rain stops. Soon after, he gets tired as the rain is not stopping. He shouts loudly out of frustration. Suzune hears his voice and asks him what he is doing there. She asks if he doesn't have an umbrella, as all students are required to leave soon. Usato becomes frightened and sets to leave for home immediately, but Suzune stops him, as sending a student home in the rain would damage the student council's dignity. In the middle of their discussion, the vice president, Kazuki, interrupts and volunteers to lend Usato his spare umbrella, shocking Usato. Suzune asks Kazuki if he knows him, and he reveals that they are classmates. Some thoughts run through Usato's mind because both of them have never communicated in class, but Kazuki knows his name. Well, he concludes that Kazuki must be a nice guy. Kazuki brings out a short umbrella and offers it to Usato. He takes it and thanks him for the favor. Kazuki was confused about whether to call him Usato or Ken. Then Usato told him it would be nice if he calls him Usato. This discussion was held while the three of them were set to leave for home. Suzune stands in between the guys, and she determines to also call him Usato. Usato thinks about the fact that he is being walked home by the two most popular kids at school. While they are having their walk home, Usato tells Kazuki that he doesn't expect him to be as friendly as he is, because he has only seen him talking to the girls in their class. Kazuki says he usually engages with the girls because they start a conversation with him. Usato shares his thoughts about Suzune. He thinks she is less approachable, but Suzune made it clear that she's just an ordinary third-year student. Kazuki tells her she is not ordinary as she is intelligent, has a good heart, and is beautiful. Usato was bothered about their relationship, and he asks them if they are dating as everyone at school talks about it. Kazuki explains that they are not dating, and Suzune says they only spend a lot of time together because of their official duty in the student council. Usato happens to be the first to ask them directly if they are dating. Many people in the school think they are dating, but they could not ask them directly, instead, they spread fake news. So, Suzune compliments him for that. As they move further, Suzune asks Usato what he will be doing after school, but Usato makes it clear that he has not yet thought about it. Suzune has also asked this same question to Kazuki, as she is curious about other people's plans because she doesn't have plans for herself. She has not found what she wants to do because of her ability to instantly complete any goal she sets for herself, she sometimes feels like she doesn't belong to that world. Suzune and Usato are nothing alike, but Usato understands the feelings Suzune has. Suddenly, Kazuki and Suzune start hearing some strange sound, similar to a bell ringing, but Usato could not hear the sound. It becomes louder and louder. After some time, a magical circle appears around them. Usato knows it's a gate to another world. Suzune asks if they will find magic, monsters, and heroes in that world. After some time, the three of them are transported, and they find themselves in an unknown palace with a king and guards. Kazuki wakes worried about others, but Suzune's expression shows that she's very happy to be in an isekai world. The king tells them that suddenly coming there has made them confused, but Kazuki boldly inquires about the identity of the man. The king understands their confusion, so he pleads with them to hear him out. He introduces himself officially, his name is Lloyd Volgast Linger, King of Linger. He explains that the three are being summoned to the Linger Kingdom to serve as heroes. Kazuki is shocked, but Suzune is so excited while Usado is frightened. The king explains that two years ago, they were attacked by the demon king of that world. The demon lord invaded the land with his army and they managed to drive him off, but the demon lord's army has been expanding its power. They could not predict the next move of the demon lord, so as a last resort, they summoned an accomplished individual from another world who can confront the demon lord by using a forbidden ritual known as hero summoning. After the long explanation, Suzune is excited, but Kazuki stands and confronts the king, saying that they summoned them without their consent. He requests that they send them back to their world immediately. The king tells him that sending them back won't be possible because the ritual only works in one direction. 
Kazuki becomes more furious, he explains that he has family back in his world, and so do his two companions, but the king feels sorry and tells him they are desperate. Kazuki steps forward for a fight, but they are surrounded by guards holding spears in their hands. The king moves close to them and bows before them. He promises to find a way to send them back to their world, but before that, they will have to help them, and he addresses them as heroes. Suzune asks the reason they are being addressed as heroes. The king calls on his magician, Welsi, who explains that the hero summoning magic circle is designed to select accomplished individuals. Welsi asks if they heard the bell ringing when they were summoned. That sound indicates that they are heroes. Kazuki remembers vividly that Usato did not hear the sound. Welsi takes them to a room to measure their magical abilities with a crystal ball. Suzune is just happy seeing things like that. Kazuki worries about Usato, but Welsi assures him that he should be able to use magic even though he is not a hero, but that's not Kazuki's concern. He thinks Usato should be angry that he is forced and caught up in the magic circle, but Usato tells him that he is not angry because he figures out that he might find something to do. Kazuki compliments him for being amazing, but Usato is sure that Suzune is way more amazing than himself, and Kazuki agrees with him. Welsi starts the measuring and asks Suzune to place her hand on the crystal ball. She joyfully places her hand, and the crystal ball changes its color. The color indicates an affinity for thunder magic, and she also has ample mana, which makes her more excited. Next is Kazuki. He places his hand on the crystal ball, and it changes to a light color, which represents light magic. He requests to know its usefulness, and then Suzune explains that he will use it to launch laser beams or swords made of light. Welsi explains more about the magic, saying only a few people could use light magic, light dispels evils against demons, and its power is unparalleled. Next is Usado, before he places his hand, he wonders if he has any magical power. If the result is positive, then he wishes to help his companions with it. As soon as he places his hand on the crystal ball, it changes its color, it's pretty like an emerald, a soothing color. The magician did not say anything, but rather she drags him out of the room to show him to the king. She gets to the king and explains that the other two heroes have great abilities, but she is there for something more important. The king thought Usado has an affinity for dark magic, but Welsi revealed that the crystal ball turned green. All guards, including the king, are shocked. The king orders that they must send him away from the castle as quickly as possible. Usado thought he was dangerous, so he kept on questioning them, but no one gave him an answer. He asks if there's someone else who possesses the same affinity, and the king says yes. Right after the king answered the question, a lady named Rose, who possesses the same affinity as him, arrives. She is the captain of the kingdom's rescue team. She comes in asking about how the hero summoning goes. King Lloyd could not speak up, he thought Rose would be taking a break, but she claims that she serves the king, so she doesn't need to take a break. Rose moves close to Usado and asks him if he's a hero. Usado becomes scared, the king cuts in and introduces him as a boy brought into the palace by their mistake. Rose asks Usado his name, and they both exchange greetings, even though Usado is fearful. Whilst he leads Rose to the room where the heroes are, the king prepares a room for Usado to rest while he thinks about what he'll do with him later. Usado asks the king about his magic that made people unsettled, and mentions what kind of magic is the green color. Rose is still in that palace and asks Usado again to confirm what he just said. She requests the king if she can take Usado with her, but the king disagrees. The king orders Welsi to take Usado away from her. Welsi uses some kind of water magic to quickly get him out of there, but Rose catches up with him and takes him away, promising that she will turn the boy into a full-fledged healing magic user. Welsi goes on to explain the whole situation to his companions, telling them that he is being taken away by the kingdom's rescue team. She informs them about Usado's affinity, which happens to be healing magic, a rare magic affinity that made Rose, the captain of the kingdom's rescue team, take him away to train and turn him into her subordinate. Suzune doesn't find any problem with that, but Welsi finds a problem in it, because Rose's training methods are unorthodox. Rose took Usado to her base. She told him about her affinity and also mentioned that he would be joining the rescue team, becoming her subordinate. Rose summons her boys, and they enter in a terrifying manner. Rose introduces Usado to them, and they all welcome him, but in a way that scares him. They then introduce themselves. These individuals are subordinates of Rose, but they are not healing magic users. There are two other healing magic users in the rescue team, but they work somewhere else. She asks Usado to get prepared for training starting from the next day. Usado doesn't want to get involved with her, but he has no choice. At first, Usado cannot sleep as he contemplates what's going to happen to him. However, we see Rose thinking about the fact that there's a healing magic user from another world. And that's the end of the first episode of The Wrong Way to Use Healing Magic. Please comment and let me know which anime recap you'd like to see next. As always, if you liked what you saw, subscribe to the channel. I'll be uploading a lot of videos just like this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, goodbye.